Dear Mrs. Hardy, I understand that my sister Julie talked to you about the email that I recently sent her, and I understand that you were wanting to know more about my opinion. So these are seven of the traits that I believe should be common in teachers in Indiana. Flexibility. I don't think teachers should always follow the lesson plan. If kids have important questions, answer them. Sometimes there's stuff going on in the news, or there's terrorist attacks, or maybe there's just a cool weather phenomenon happening outside. And they want to talk about that. Let them discuss it. They're in interested in something for once. Also, sometimes there's like national holidays, like National Sibling Day or National Pumpkin Day. Or if a kid has a new sibling or a pet, or if it's their birthday, let things go off kilter a little bit. Just make sure they don't go too far off. And also, I think you should allow them to sit wherever they want during homework, reading, or free time, as long as they're not being disruptive. It also enhances their critical thinking because they have to think through why they are sitting there and what good it brings them. Some kids prefer reading when on their stomachs. Some kids prefer reading in a dark spot. So they should each be allowed to choose their own spot as long as they aren't causing any trouble. Next is civic literacy. It is, quote, how to actively participate and initiate change in your community and the greater society. Excuse me. It is how to stay informed in civil life, such as global awareness. You need to keep up with the news, what's happening, where your kids are from, leaders of the world, American politics, Indiana politics, Indiana laws. Whenever something big happens in America, it's heard all over the news, but our kids don't always hear it. Or if they do, they don't understand it. And it's scary when you're a kid and somebody's talking about something and they don't explain it. And all you know, all that you know is that it's bad. They need to be treated with the respect that they should should have. They should know what's happening. It shouldn't be hidden from them. On that note, you should also be accepting of everything. Except in this world, there's so many new genders and sexualities out there. And you're going to come in, you're going to have kids that are asexual, that are bisexual, that aren't that don't identify as male or female and there are kids that come from different backgrounds different religions different lack of religions perhaps and then there's kids that have mental health or physical disabilities you need to accommodate every single one of those kids because everybody's different and they all deserve education also, teachers need to have leadership and initiative. They need to know how to be, how to communicate with kids of their age group, how to keep their interest with creative activities. They also need to be able to find access to resources that they can use, and they need to be enthusiastic about your subject. They can't just lecture every day just for the paycheck kids catch on that and they also need to be able to teach critical thinking or evaluation like they need to teach the kids if they're in middle school they need to teach them how to check sources to see if it's legit or not and also when you ask a question wait three or five seconds before calling on somebody let the kids ponder over the question also, have a question of the day and a response box. That way, kids don't have to share their opinions out loud, but they still have to be thinking. And also, you can read a statement with two opposing views and make them choose sides so they have to think about it. And then also, there's the turnaround strategy. If something bad happens, ask what good will come of it. Thank you for your time, Mrs. Hardy. Have a great day.